What color are you throwing, John? I'm throwing a uh, matrix chat ultraviolet. So it's kind of white with. Uh, that one? That one. It's a something. I'm going to try this purple with the green tail that's on them. Trout? Oh yeah. Trout? Nice trout. Oh yeah, hell yeah. Trout. Is it a net? No, I think I'll... That's pretty trout. Yeah, that is a beautiful trout. Yes, it is. It's like my second cast. Here at the dam. Out this morning was Don. How you doing? Mississippi angler, big time fisherman. So we're gonna see what we can do today. But man, this is a great start. This fish actually feels warm. Water is hanging on the bottom. It's a little warmer down there. Welcome back to my deep water fishing series. This is episode three. As you remember from episode one and two, I was dealing with some water temperature in the low to mid 60s. But today, I have water temperature down in the mid 50s, around 56, 57 degrees. And that is wonderful for deep water fishing because it concentrates the fish in some of the deeper holes. And this particular spot where we're fishing is in fact a well-known community hole for the deep water winter fishing. And it's game on today. This is an incredible fishing uh, period this morning. And I hope you enjoy this video. There's also some similarities to episode two, more than episode one, in that today we also have a lot of bait around. And of course, this is an excellent habitat uh, because this is a, uh, it's a dam and there's a lot of rock on the bottom. So there's a lot of habitat for bait to be hiding and for areas for the trout to hang and ambush the bait. Uh, but there's also moving water. And as you watch this video, and keep your eye open for when we observe and how we observe these conditions that are perfect for this morning's slam dunk of fishing. I'm not doing a, a pontchartrain pop. Yeah, like Chaz. Yeah, I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to let the current carry it along. I'm not trying to be crazy with the pop, they just don't need it. Here's a good keeper. Well, yeah. That's, yeah, that's a good keeping size. That's a, about a 13. Catching fish. Huh? Under there catching fish. That's actually a, a really good spot, too. Where they, where they are. are. Not huge today, but... Other than that, the first one was nicer. First one was a real pretty fish. Yeah, but, I see that in food mullet jumping on top. Yeah. Oh, this place can be full of bait sometimes. I mean, full of bait. A nice one. Well, they are consistently here. They're not the five pounders five pounders, let's say three pounders. There you go. He was falling when I caught him. There you go. I was just letting it drop. Yeah, these are, these are pretty much clones <laughs> of uh, twins. Yeah. He's probably making them. Yep, you make it. You got one? Yep. 
This is now there's a little bear one. Yep. That's a nice fish. Yeah, that's a beautiful 16 incher. Right by the boat, coming up. Coming up. See yeah. now that's a smaller fish. I wonder if bigger I mean fish. I think the smaller fish and the bigger fish act differently. I really I think that the, the bigger fish are less likely to chase it upward. I just, I feel like, I feel like you could find the smaller fish in stronger current even. And they yeah, might, you know, they might be coming up to the surface even. I love this way of fishing in deep water, this jigging method, and a lot of other fishermen do too. And it, you know, if you're, if you've only been doing live bait, uh, let's say under a cork, you might be intimidated by the thought of, throwing a, a rubber jig down there and trying to catch fish. But uh, if you put some time into it, you put some effort into it, you can also learn it. It's not that difficult. But what is so attractive, I think, to me, and, and I, I would imagine to a lot of fishermen, because we're all kind of the same, is that tap on the line. You know, you're just holding your pole and you feel this subtle tap. And it's just like making contact with an alien. It's just so amazing. It's so kind of stimulating to feel that tap. There's something really primal, I think, satisfying on a primal level, on a very deep level about catching a fish, especially tricking a fish into biting some rubber. Um, and when you, you feel that tap, you set the hook and you've got it, you, you, you've somehow you've tricked that fish and uh, man I, I'm not I don't know what's so satisfying about that uh, it's not like a fish is a thinking being so it's not like you're tricking a intelligent being but it's programmed to be very effective at what it does so it is not easily tricked um, a fish, it's like nature's minion <laughs> because a fish is programmed by its natural biological system. So it's actually just an extension of this giant nature that we live in. And so when you trick that fish into biting some rubber, you've actually tricked nature. You've tricked, you've hacked the systems of nature into doing what you want it to do. Which, uh, yeah, I don't, I'm not, I don't think I see nature as my enemy, but it's definitely trying to kill me. Uh, if I fall overboard right here in this spot, uh, the water's cold enough that if I don't get out of there, I could sink down with the fishes. It's a uh, nature is a weird thing, and of course, this is coming from someone who, in the last two years, have lost two parents, mother-in-law, something like seven aunts or uncles. So, yeah, this fallen nature we live in is trying to kill us. There's no doubt about it. And so I feel good about hacking it, tricking its minions into biting my piece of rubber, and pull it up from the depths. Even if I just release it, I've still tricked it. And uh, some of those minions I'm gonna eat as well. So I have further hacked the system into taking benefit from that. Anyway, enough of a rant. Back to the minions. I get down, bounce. Yeah. I just got to go super slow. I don't think I'm getting down quite quick enough. I'm coming through the strut, through the zone before I'm getting down. Mm -hmm. Now that fish was, was, was close to the rocks, much closer than the other one. Now this one might be a little better. A little bit bigger too, or it's a redfish. 
this might be a redfish i hope it's a i hope it's a trout because it's a if it's a trout it's it's a nice trout Ooh. oh it's a giant oh it's a nasty redfish <laughs> big nasty i mean i because it's, something took a bite out the top of it i'm serious look at it it's got it's missing half its look at that something took a I don't know. Maybe that's why it's not fighting so hard. No, I, I got it. See what I can do with this thing. Yeah, he's not a pretty red fish. Not sure. Yeah, he's been he's been through the. Wow, he is beat up. Maybe he's pretty gnarly dude dude good luck I hope you survive this is one of the first matrix shads I fished a lot and I UV? tried yeah it's a UV and I've gone to all the different colors but this year I've just been I've been fishing that a lot it's got that nice purple sheen to it it's white with the purple so anytime the water's clear I'm just putting this one on I'll go in dingy water off and go with that the green hornet. Look at that bait swimming right there. A little glass mill. Okay. Might be why they want that white too. They eat feeding on them glass mills. Yep. Oh no, that's a nice trout. Oh, that's the biggest trout of the day right there. There we go. That's probably 20, at least 20 inches. Nice fish. Beautiful. You want a picture of it? Here. Get, catch that one up closer too? Yeah, kind of. He wasn't far. As soon as it, it seemed like as soon as it started falling, good. Try one here in a minute, I'm sure. I like to experiment a little bit. <laughs> this is a nice fish too. Oops, a oh yeah, pretty, I... pretty. Really nice. That's pretty fish, man. Gotta work on that technique. You're pretty nice fish. Yeah. That's a good one. The pretty one for the box. Nope, we full in the box. <laughs> Ooh, here's a nice fish too. Oh yeah, it's a beautiful fish. Yeah. Oh, they got some pretty color. These are really pretty fish. They sure are. Yeah beautiful with that dog back yeah sometimes they if it's the sun hits them right they got like a rainbow yeah that iridescent color, color. yeah Oh yeah. Oh yeah. A little bigger one now we've been catching this. It's nice. Yeah. That's 
like every cast now for you. I'm doubled up, we're doubled up here. If I neck the current line is on. But you know, a spot like this, it's all about the current, the flow. It's gotta be the right. The, 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 you may catch some fish if the current's not right, but for this many fish, it's gotta have it's gotta be perfect. Well you got that nailed uh, that uh whatever that is. You got that nailed. This is a fighting one. Pretty fish. Oh yeah, hell yeah. Another one coming in. Beautiful fish right there, John. About a 20, maybe 20 inch. Let's see the depth here. So we are in 20 foot of depth. So that's 20 foot down. And they're right down there. That's a nice fish. Yeah. Taking that matrix shed deep. Man, that is a magic spot right there. Hey, right there. there, ain't it, John? It's like the same spot. This is a nice fish, too. Yeah, that's what I say. I think them bigger fish are up there close to the rocks. They ain't expending as much energy. Even on him. Oh, yeah, he's biting. That's beautiful fish, man. God, bigger one that's the yeah, bigger, that's size. bigger size <laughs> and you caught that one up closer Close to the to rocks, rocks. Yeah, yep. and 15 and a half 15 and a half well, next year that'll be a good limit another pretty one hell yeah that's a damn 16 inch there John close Fifteen, huh? Fifteen and a half. Yep. Every now and then you get one of them good ones though. Got one of those measuring boards. We, we were really them. interested. You got one? Uh, yeah, one, but I think I'll be. Yeah, yeah. So I switched up to a south. What are these things? Down south. Down south. That's like a five or six incher. Just to see if I could catch some bigger trout. This is not one of them, but we'll see. But he's coming. He's coming. I hammered it. You got another one? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. He's right up in that same current? Yeah, he was pretty close. Where that gull is? Not you get on get in my line. Oh, what's a pretty nice one? Nice guy. Real nice, nice guy. One. Real nice, pretty. Boy, they pretty. I seen the purple iridescence on him. There we go. Yeah, pretty fish. Long bait. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> that little guy. Yeah, that's what I say they little out here. He didn't even know it was in its mouth. Mm-hmm. Got one? I'm getting worried that this bigger bait was not getting him in, but that's a nice fish. 
So that wraps up episode three of deep water fishing. If, you, if you're not familiar with this way of fishing, I hope you're starting to feel energized that you can get out there. Uh, you don't have to winterize your boat, but you can get out there in the wintertime and catch some beautiful speckled trout and get some real satisfaction from being able to trick the natural systems into yielding you a dinner or just a nice fish to look at, either way. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate a subscription and a thumbs up if you like this video. And uh, I'm sure I'll get to other episodes in the deep water fishing series.